Well hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. So tonight what I'm going to do is share a quick tutorial with you because we were at a recent Glencoe photography trip and my friend Mark had taken some images. We had horrendous weather with the rain and it was really difficult to take shots because the rain kept coming into our face all the time. So as soon as you took your lens cap off, the lens got covered in rain. So Mark experienced a lot of rain spots on some of his images. So what he's done is he sent me those images and asked if I would edit them. So let's switch over to the tutorial and I'll show you how easy it is in Lightroom to remove rain spots and also do some quick edits as well while I'm updating the photo. Earlier my friend Mark asked if I would have a look at some of his photos that we took at a recent trip to Glencoe and what I was keen to learn was how to remove rain spots. So what I'll do is I'll quickly move over to the healing brush. Now what we can do quite quickly is we can select the visualising spots tool and right away we can see one two three four four um raindrops so let's click on the healing brush and then all we need to do is drag over we'll drag over again that spot that spot and that spot right so if i unselect the visualize spots now what we can do is zoom in and look for any other spots that may Just double check if there are any other raindrops other than the ones that we selected. So it looks like we've cleared those raindrops in this image. So what I'll do now is I'll just quickly come out of there and I'll reduce the screen. But what if Mark doesn't mind, what I'll do is a quick edit. So I'll just show you some of these masking tools. So I can select the sky. Turn off the mask, just slowly reduce the highlights so we bring up more definition in the sky. So there's some areas where we've got the highlights have kind of blow, blown out. So what I'll do is I'll be quite sensitive in those areas so we can do the blend. Um, and then what we want to do now is select the foreground and then try and enhance the foreground. So a quick way of doing that is selecting sky again, then invert it, so double click on the icon below the mask, select invert and then it selects the whole area below the image. So if I just up the exposure, increase some of the shadows, what I can do is just touch the contrast just to give it a little bit of depth, increase some of the clarity, increase the texture. I'll look at dehaze and see what dehaze does. Well we really want to keep that mist here above the buccal because that gives us atmosphere. So what we could also do um, is crop. So if I select the crop tool and if we do a 16 by 9 and then if I slide that up here. Now the other thing we can do here is if I zoom in the water really nice we've got some really nice colours and all I really need to do now is fix, remove any chromatic aberration enable the profile for the camera settings and then what I could do is just add a little vignette to say the value of 12 just to pull us in so we've got the darker edges now but pulls us into the buccal so if I go to the second image whoa we've got a lot more rain spots here so if I go back to the healing brush select visualize spots we can see quite a number here so I've still selected the healing brush if I drag over this spot, this spot, those two spots, that spot, this spot, and so on, and I'll keep going till I've removed all these raindrops. Now the one thing we'll need to do is, when we go back to the image, is check where, now that's quite a small, so I'll just reduce the size of my brush. That looks like we've got a spot there. Looks like we've got a wee spot here, and here, and here, that could be a spot there. Right, so if I unselect the visualise spots, wow, it's done a really good job. And the way that the image has been composed, we don't have any highlights burnt out in the clouds like we did earlier. So what I'll do here is I'll still stay 
with the clone brush and I'll just drag that over because I can see quite a few spots around the image so again we'll just keep dragging over and to be fair the healing brush in Lightroom has got so good now um, we don't really need to switch over to Photoshop to do this right so I can't see any more raindrops at the moment so what we'll do is we'll do a quick edit because if there's any imperfections then this should highlight it so if I deselect the mask pull back the highlights just to give us a wee bit more definition in the clouds I could drag up the dehaze whilst I still want to keep the atmosphere that Mark has caught again go up to select sky invert it so double click press invert undo the mask and then I can start to brighten up the foreground just lift some of those shadows that's too much so we've got someone in the image here so I can show you how to remove them so let's increase the texture just give it a wee bit more clarity I mean this looks really saturated at the moment so we could just pull down the saturation just a bit again for this one we won't crop it to 16 by 9 we'll leave it as it is but what we can do is let's see if we can just lift up the whites just a bit to give it a wee bit of a glow right now what I'll do is I'll go down we can look at the sharpness so in order to sharpen the areas that I want if you hold option key and slide the sharpen bar across areas that are highlighted at the end and white will just be the areas that are sharpened and we don't have to sharpen the whole image so if I've, I've created I've selected remove chromatic aberration we've enabled profile corrections and what I'll do then is I'll add a slight vignette so it pulls us in 12 is enough right so we've got this individual I don't know if Mark wants to keep the individual in or not but I'll just show you how easy it is um, to remove that person so if I go back to the healing brush, I'll increase my brush size and all I need to do is drag down and the, well that's not done a very good job at all. So if we come back, let me just feather, opacity, size and let's see if we use a smaller brush will that make a big difference. Right, so that's not a good effect. So let's try the clone tool. So if I up my brush size, sweep over, that's a much better result. So the clone tool works better than the healing brush in that situation. So it's something that you can keep trying. So that's Mark's finished image there. Now we've got the buckle and we've got a lot of cloud. It's a really nice looking image. The only distractions we've got here are these, the edges of the trees. So the key thing here is, do we want to crop and take that out? If we do, we're going to lose the edge of the mountain. So what we could do is switch back to the healing brush and then just drag over those branches. There's one there. And I'm doing this in a rush, so if you wanted to refine it, you can spend more time in doing that. I'll just tidy some of these up again. That one's not... There we go, that's done a good job. Right, so again, let's enhance the sky. Select the sky tool. Undo the mask so we can see what we're doing. Pull down the highlights to give us a wee bit more definition in the clouds. Increase dehaze, not too much, so we've got some depth. And if it's getting too dark, we can pull back the saturation a bit. Now what we want to do is brighten up the foreground a bit so if I use select the linear gradient and what I can do is lift this up then what I'll do is dis disable the mask and then what we can start to do is increase the whites increase the shadows now we can start to see the foreground lifting and there's texture in the trees there and we're getting a good so not too much from clarity we've just added some texture now what we want to do is want to make those trees pop so let's isolate those trees so if I get the circular gradient and just drag that over 
Let's pull it here to the edge, undo the mask, lift the exposure just a bit, increase the whites, increase the shadows, increase the clarity, and there we have the masking edits finished. Right, so there's so still some kind of stragglers at the base here. So if I go back in to the healing brush, and if I go over those little bushes, I can then take those bushes out, and then there's less distractions on the base of the image. Again, if I go back to remove chromatic aberration, enable lens protect correction, and just add a slight mask 10 yeah, let's leave it at 10 and then what that does is it gives us a kind of darkish frame that focuses straight into the buccal and that's a really nice image so this last image that Mark shared there's not any rain spots on this but what we do have is a lot of highlights so what we can do here is the most of the highlights are at the top of the image so if we select the mask and we go to linear gradient and we pull that down unselect the mask so we can see what we're doing pull down the highlights and as you start to see that's taking the glow off the tree what we can do is increase the texture up the clarity and then we can have a look at giving it some kind of depth using the dehaze tool now the image looks oversaturated at the moment so what we can do is go back to the basics and then we can go to Vibrance, pull the Vibrance way down a little bit, not way down, just a bit, so about minus five. And now what we can do is up the texture, because he's got a nice depth of field in the image where he's got his tree in focus and the background's out of focus, so we don't want to play about with that too much. Well, I added another plus two for clarity I'll remove chromatic aberration, I'll enable profile corrections and again I'll add a little vignette so that that gives us a wee bit more focus on the tree stump in the foreground. So there we have it, that's some four simple steps on how to remove uh, raindrops and how to just quickly touch up and edit your uh, images. So hopefully that was useful and uh, thanks very much for watching. Okay, so I hope you found that useful. I hope it helps and hope it's given you some tips on how to quickly visualise rain spots just in case you miss them with the naked eye. And some basic edits, they're just quick edits. If you had a lot more time, you could do a better job than I have done, but it just gives Mark an idea of how to lift the image after you've deleted the rain spots in Lightroom. So if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do because you know it's free. And if you press the bell notification, that will let you know the next time I post a video. So thanks very much for watching and here's to the next video.